<laughs> All right, so Simone, we saw some key moments there, I suppose. Key moments, crazy moments, I don't even know. Crazy. Well, give us, what was your takeaway think, watching the whole debate? Well, I watched the last debate as well, like we all did. I thought the last debate, and I hate to say this, but it was a little, it was a little boring, it was a little muted. The last The one. last debate. This debate was not muted. It was the opposite of the last debate. The last debate, I would argue, was more policy, substantive, right? This debate, we're, you know, we're talking about not even the core things of Donald Trump. So I thought that Nikki Haley, out of all the people on the stage look like the adult on the stage, if you will. I still have yet to see a president. Uh, it was concerning. People sounded angry. You know, it sounded, they were yelling, they were screaming. Uh, I was shocked that abortion didn't come up. I'm mm. more shocked that abortion didn't come up and health care didn't come up, but yet Vivek Ramaswamy found time to bring up climate change at the uh, end. And anti-trans. More yes. anti-trans yes. yes. than yes. anti-Trump. Okay, Michael Steele, so give I us your take. Come, I come at you it a little back. bit. Uh, Don't hold back uh, today. No, no, no. We're on YouTube. Uh, hold, uh, hold back. <laughs> Me hold back? <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, no, I, I, I'm going to differ a little bit from my friend, uh, Simone. I, uh, Nikki Haley was muted in my view, this you, evening. Do you think that was purposeful? Because I, I kind think, of think maybe. I think a little bit, yes. Um, in, in the political parlance, it was, you got to lead, hold it. Don't mm -hmm. do anything or say anything that gives away your, your lead or your opportunity. The problem is, you still have to do something. And there were moments where she tried, but it's, it's one of those things when you're playing catch up in that, in that space, when, when, the, when the incoming is coming and you're just sort of standing there and not really engaging, it becomes a little bit of a problem. So I give the evening to Chris Christie mm. for two reasons. One, he was the only one who made it very clear that the guy they needed to beat was Donald Trump. He is 40 points ahead of all of them. And so as he noted, we're going after each other and he's the one who's winning. So I thought that was important. And two, I think there was a little bit more gravitas from him on some of the issues that they did discuss, where he sort of he sort of admitted where, you know, in the past his position may have been one thing, and he sort of talked about how he kind of grew in that moment. So I would give him the advantage on this debate uh, tonight. Well, I guess it depends on whether Republican primary voters relate well, that's, to But what that's not the point he here. Said. You oh, you're way past that. You're way past Performance Republic on the debate yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, performance on the debate stage. You're not, he's not picking up voters tonight. Yes. He's not going from, from three to eight tomorrow. That, but he's that, going for history, I think. He's going the, for he's history. Going, he, he had some so. good moments, and we'll talk about those. Okay, Alicia, hello in New York. Tell us what you thought. What was your takeaway from that Jim wild Saki, and crazy toad ride? I will not be sharing my analysis until snacks and caffeine are provided. <laughs> I was given this well, I know. Cup if you were here, we would have so delivered feel... what you had requested, but or what I thought you might like, maybe, is more what it is. I mean, the best part of the entire debate was texting with Simone. Outside of that, it felt like I was watching the darkest, saddest games of Mad Libs ever. Fauci, Soros, woke industrial complex, fentanyl, all the talk about trans kids. Really no focus on any of the issues that matter and are going to drive voters to the polls, at least when you're talking about a general election. I mean, I think we all know these, these ideas aren't coming from nowhere. They're clearly showing up in focus groups. Perhaps they're showing up in, in polling. Uh, but what it means is that they're spending time on this stage not talking about the stakes at all, not talking about the alternative reality where Donald Trump is to win the nomination. They're not even talking about just the issues that are top of mind for voters, like the economy, like housing affordability. There was, you know, some weird riff from DeSantis about drilling for oil as a way of somehow bringing down uh, the price of gas prices. Uh, Simone said it. There was no talk about abortion. It, it's stunning to me. And granted, I did take several breaks, so you'll forgive me if I missed it. But I mean, there was another mass you shooting in this it. country today. <laughs> you didn't miss it. I didn't miss it. There was another mass shooting in this country today, and, and there was no talk no. about guns and gun culture. So it, it felt just completely disconnected from the reality of the moment. And, and to Michael's point, yeah, this may not be about picking up any voters, but you know, this is the alternate slate of candidates we mm -hmm. could be looking at in some weird world where it's not Donald Trump. And you don't get the sense substantively that you're seeing anything that meets the moment.